that. I got a text today that you love to get. Let me find it. So Sunday, didn't we have two amazing services at 9 and 11 a.m.? Just the power of God took over in this place, and we're so thankful for Pentecost Sunday. Not only that, we had several watching online, and one of those was Gary Porter. And I got a text message from, from Greg today, and he said, I just want to let you know my brother Gary was watching you on the computer at home. He told me he felt a feeling come over him. He started crying. Then he said he was babbling words. He didn't know what it was. He knew a little enough to know that God just filled him with the Holy Ghost. Isn't it awesome that while we're here, the power of God was moving. Someone's watching in their home and God's... Listen, tech teams, it makes it worth every effort we put into this. Worship team band, every time we preach to an empty building, that kind of stuff makes it all worth it. So let's give God a great hand clap of praise as we enter into worship this evening. God bless you.
Oh, I love what I feel tonight. Can we just take just a little bit longer and give him that great hand clap of praise that he's so worthy of? God, we love you. We're so thankful on a Wednesday night. We're so thankful to be back in your house on first Wednesday. Thankful to feel your presence. Thankful to feel your anointing. Oh, Lord Jesus, we bless you. We give you glory. We give you praise. Amen. Again, why don't you just look around a little bit. Wave at somebody and say, it's so good to see you in the house of the Lord on a Wednesday night. Amen. Isn't it great to be here and feel the presence of the Lord? Just a full house on a Wednesday and we got people in the overflow room. We're glad for all those in the overflow room. Finally got to use that. We got set up. All of you watching online, we welcome you watching from home. We're excited about what God is doing in this place. And we are so blessed tonight to have some of our very dear friends, Pastor Mark and Carol Condon. We're blessed to have them with us tonight. We have ate many meals together, and I'm thankful for him to finally be here to minister to us. They pastor a great church in Columbus, Ohio. And they have some awesome things happening. And I, I told them, if you feel led, go ahead and share that because we're in a little bit of a building program project of our own, raising some money. And he's had some miracle things happen. And I hope he shares that with us tonight. But can we put our hands together and welcome Pastor Mark Condon as he ministers to us. It is great to be here. I am just so excited. And uh, I'm so glad to be with you all. Man, what a, what a great church. And I knew when I pulled off the exit and I saw Chick-fil-A, I thought this has got to be a great church. I mean, Chick-fil-A is right next to it. So I knew that God was going to move uh, when I saw that. And then when I walked in, just felt the worship. Uh, I think I'm a little church deprived. We've been doing the whole online thing, obviously, too. And so just to feel the strength of a church worshiping uh, just feels great. Thank God. Thank God. You may be seated, and uh, I'm going to sing one song here before I speak, And uh, but in a world that's been so full of so much craziness uh, over the last few months, who would have ever thought, you know, that when we started 2020 that, you know, it'd be be going like it did so uh but i wrote a song several years ago and and i just want to speak uh sing this song to you and, and let you know that no matter what the god that passes that just knows how to give peace that passes all understanding uh is here and 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 so i just want to sing this for you it says peace of god cover me cover me Cover me, peace of God, cover me through the storm, they cover me, only in you I am saved.
Let the peace that passes all I understand cover me. Oh, yes, cover us tonight, Lord. Cover us, oh, yes, cover our minds, cover our nation, Lord, cover our city, God. God, I pray, Lord, let a peace breathe on us this evening, God. I pray, Lord, let the power of your spirit begin to move in this place, Lord. We need you. We need you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. And it just feels good in the house. I thank God. I thank God someone's having church because we have church in a school and we can't get in there and we don't even know when we're getting in there. So that's like a little frustrating. If they just give me a date, I think I could handle it. But I called and talked to the school superintendent today and or yesterday, excuse me, and and uh, and he's not giving me any kind of hope right now. So uh, please keep us in your prayers. We need to have church. This feels good. And uh, so, man, I'm, thank you so much, uh, Pastor, and for allowing us to be in your cool place here. And uh, we want a building so bad, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about that here in a little bit. But if you will open up your Bibles to uh, Philippians chapter 3, chapter 3, verse 13, and, uh, and I want to talk to you for just a few short minutes. Y'all happy? Yeah. All right. You feel good? You'll have to be a little patient with me for several reasons. Number one, I haven't spoken in front of anybody real for like a couple months. So I'm going to take it all out on you, all right? And number two, God's got some incredible things going on. And I'm just a little dangerously pumped. So uh, you just might want to like put your seatbelts on if you have them. And, uh, and we're about to have a little bit of church here. So, Philippians chapter 3, and it says, Brethren, I'm going to read it off that back wall since you have that cool screen. I count not myself to apprehend it, meaning I've not achieved it all. This is Paul talking. I've not got it all figured out. Um, I'm not there yet. I'm working on some things myself. But he says, but this one thing I do. Not a couple things uh, not a, just a variety of things. He's not talking about multitasking here. He says, I, this one thing I do, he said, I'm gonna focus on this one thing, forgetting those things which are behind. Man, if we could just get that part of that scripture down, and because all of our energy and all of our focus, uh, I wanna challenge you this evening to just forget all the things that's happened up to this moment. I don't care what hurt is coming your way. I don't care what event or series of events that have come into your life somewhere in the past. Maybe it was years ago. Maybe it was a month ago. Maybe it was just an hour ago. But if you'll get this down, Paul says, I, I want you to get this. He said, if you'll forget the things that are behind you, and he said, and reach forward or look forward to the things which are before Let's take our focus off everything from the past and let's put our energy, our efforts, all of our focus on what lies ahead. We can't do much about the past, and, but we can do a lot about the future. And so let's get our focus on all the things we don't understand and all the things that's hurt us and all of our little offenses and everything. If we can figure this out, and put all of our energy on what lies ahead. I'm telling you, church, God only knows. God only knows what this church can accomplish because I feel like if there's ever been a season that the world is ready for us to unleash, it's now. I, I just, I think the world, their hearts are ready. I mean, we've been through hell the last several months between the whole virus Thing and, and, and then the unrest that's going on, I'm telling you, I believe people's hearts are going to be saying, please give me an answer. 
Give me an answer. I need the answer. And the answer is Jesus Christ. He is our future. He's our hope. He's everything. I want to talk to you for just a couple minutes about comfort or growth. You can choose comfort or growth, but this is what I know. You can't choose both because comfort and growth do not coexist. You'll have to make up your mind. Now, I understand. I get comfort. I like comfort. In fact, I know most of us, we work hard to get to some place that's comfortable. My wife will always say, Mark, please don't pray for another level because I'm just enjoying this for a little bit. She said, this is finally comfortable. We finally just can chill out and relax. But the one thing I know is you cannot have comfort and growth at the same time. You'll have to choose. You'll have to choose. I want to share just a little story about where Carol and I are and how we got there. Some of you may know this, and I know some of you from years ago. And, uh, but we, we, for years, I ran around the country, did worship, led worship. I loved it. It was comfortable. It was amazing. I mean, you know, one thing about traveling is whenever you go somewhere and you're new, people like you. You know, they don't know who you really are. They just think, wow, he's talented, and let's just put him in a really nice hotel and feed him really nice food. And I'm telling you, I kind of like that. In fact, my wife would tell me when I come home, she said, Mark, please understand, that's not reality. And I said, Carol, it's my reality, and I like it. Every week, somebody likes me. They all think, you know, because I was new somewhere all the time. It was comfortable, and we were just a year away from paying off our home, and so that was getting ready to get really comfortable, and our kids were growing up. So finally, I could see hope in the future. I was going to get Carol a lot more time to myself, and I was finally going to be able to buy something that the kids wouldn't trash. And I, I mean, I just, I was seeing comfortable. We, I was waiting for this moment. I was thinking, God, is, it's about to be an amazing, comfortable life. But God had been dealing with me for quite a few time, or quite a few years, and to be honest with you, I just, I didn't understand it, and God had been talking to me about uh, planning a church and pastoring, and, and I just sort of shoved it aside because I thought, God, you know, I, I don't preach, I sing, and, you know, and if this doesn't work, this could be like a massive failure because if it doesn't work and my kids resent it, they'll leave, and if they leave, Carol will leave, and it's just, it's, it's, Carol, I, I'm, God, I'm not ready to take that risk. And, and, and so eventually I was in Houston teaching at a worship conference, and I woke up on a Saturday morning and uh, not feeling well. And I called Carol. I was getting ready to teach for several hours. And I said, man, I feel like crud. I said, I don't know. I said, I got a kink in my neck. And I said, I, don't, I feel like I've been run over by a Mack truck. And, and, uh, and so I just complained a little bit there. And, and I went and taught for four straight hours and, and caught a plane and was on my way home. And I was walking through the airport. And I mean, it hit me like a brick. I mean, just, I mean, my shoulder began to pinch. And I thought I just stretched a muscle from sleeping wrong or something about just dropped right there in the middle of the airport. And I uh, I'm talking to someone on the plane, so finally I got up and I was dragging this big thing of CDs, and and I got in the car. Carol and my daughter picked me up, and we were talking. And something got interesting, so I never told him what happened in the airport. And so we got talking about something, and so the next day it happened again, and then the next morning it was really bothering me. And you know what wives do if something's bothering you, they start looking things up on Google, you know, see what you have and what's wrong. And so Carol was like going at it, you know, on the internet just trying to figure figure out, you know, what's wrong with me, and I just thought I'd pulled a muscle, but I'd wound up having multiple heart attacks at 47 years old, and never been sick a day in my life, and I did have this goal to see how many cheesecake factories I could eat as I was running around the country, and that probably contributed to this, you know, situation, but uh, I, I wound up on Tuesday morning having this massive heart attack, and, uh, and I got to the air, uh, airport, I was used to that, I got to the hospital, and, uh, and they said, your artery, your main artery is 99.9% .9 blocked. And he said, Mr. Conan, you are a miracle that you are here because most people never make it. Well, that changed my life. I mean, that just absolutely changed uh, my entire life. And I realized then that God was trying to get my attention. And, uh, and, and I thought then I just had a lot more courage. You know, I thought, well, man, I, I almost didn't live. So what good planning a church it couldn't be much worse than that. 
you know, so, uh, so Carol and I talked to Carol months. I went through rehab and, and uh, started to feel a lot better. And, and, uh, and we began to talk about this. And Carol was trying not to listen to sort of that la, 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 don't talk to me about that kind of thing. And, and, but I knew that God, uh, where God was leading us, and, and Carol did too, except, you know, uh, she was hoping that we both didn't agree on it at the same time. And, but then we began to, uh, we realized our life was about to become very uncomfortable. All of our friends, our home, everything we knew, our finances, we were pretty comfortable. God had blessed us, and, and you know, I thought, man, if I do this, all my contracts and, and my agreements with the record and publishing company and all that stuff is going to be so very different, and, and I don't know if it doesn't work. I don't know if I could ever get it back, and, and just everything was such a massive decision, and, and, but I knew that God had spoke to me, so we, we decided, Carol, in fact, one time, Carol and I, we were walking uh, down Columbus downtown, our family, the whole family was, and we stopped at this bridge, and we were looking out uh, over downtown, and Carol said, Mark, if you could go anywhere and plant a church, where would you go? I mean, without thinking, I just said, Gehanna. I said, I'd go to Gehanna, and she said, well, then that's where we need to go. That's what we need to do. And uh, so I began to explore all the options of what we needed to do to do that. And, and uh, let me just tell you something. Uh, it wasn't easy. We went through hell to plant the church. And I mean, it was a mess in so many different ways. But God began to just open that door. And, uh, and we began to step out of comfortable into everything we were doing was uncomfortable. I mean, we left friends. We left our home. We left everything, all of our you know, conversations, you won't, you'd be surprised when you go out to eat, you know, you get to talk with people and you have a lot in common. But when you plant a church and you start, you know, going out to eat with people you've never met before, it's like crazy. You don't even know what to talk about. You know, I mean, they don't understand anything about your life and you don't understand much about their life. And um, everything was just getting crazily and awkwardly uncomfortable in our life, and, and uh, we moved up there, and we planned the church, and, and, and they begin to grow, and people begin to walk into our lives, and, and, and it begin to change us. Our lives are so very different than they've ever been, and uh, we see people that don't look like us, they don't dress like us, they don't smell like us, they don't act like us, they're nothing like us. And I mean, you look and you try, I mean, I remember one time my daughter said, thank God someone normal just walked in. And I mean, it just, it's just, it's a crazy, crazy world. And, but we knew, and, and I remember as I planned this church, I, one of the reasons I felt like I wanted to do it is because I felt like I need to be stretched. I feel like I can, I can go to that keyboard and play it and not even think I've done it so many times. And in fact, she said, you don't have a monitor. And I said, I don't need a monitor. You know, I said, I've just done it so many times. I know where I am. I know what I'm doing. I, I get that. That's comfortable for me. But then we planted a church. Now, I went around the country, and I could talk about worship all the time. But when I got to talking, like, thinking I had to come up with a message every Sunday that actually made sense, that made me a nervous wreck. But I knew that if I was ever going to grow and become what God destined for me to be and do, that God had been shaping me my entire life for that moment. Now, I'm going somewhere, so just stay with me because I, I believe that God is about to position this church and is positioning this church for something that is very different, something that's very different than where it's ever been. I believe that. With, I believe he's going to just do this with churches all over this country, especially churches that are really willing to step out of comfortable and go into growth. It's going to be different. It's going to be different. And I believe over the next several months, I believe God will bring hundreds of people in this church and they're not gonna look like you. They're not gonna understand you. They're not gonna have your favorite preachers. They're not gonna know your favorite songs and they're gonna look totally different and they're gonna sit in your seat that you've probably already figured out is your assigned seat. It's gonna be very different. Now, I don't know how long you've been sitting in this room and been, been having church in this room, but I imagine if you've been here, I think for a couple, several months prior to all this happening, right? Some of you already have assigned seats. I mean, some of you are already sitting in the same place. Raise your hand if I'm, if I'm I mean, you, you, anybody, you just keep sitting pretty much in the same place. You like hurry up and get, yeah, yeah. There are some of you already got assigned seats. It's getting ready to change. 
is getting ready to change because God is going to take us out of comfortable and move us into growth. God is going to put people there. You're going to be sitting next to people. God's going to put them in the overflow rooms. You've got to understand it's going to get uncomfortable. It's going to get uncomfortable. You can be married to the mission or you can be married to the method. There's gonna be some things change. There's gonna be some methods that may be a little different. Don't freak out. Don't get just like, oh my God, what's happening? What's happening? They're doing a little program. It's a little different than what we used to do. We're trying something different. Don't spaz. You're gonna be okay. Okay, it's gonna be okay because we're gonna get uncomfortable. We're gonna allow God to move in our hearts and move in our lives. You're gonna give different. You're gonna pray different. You're gonna show up different. You're gonna do something different. I wanna encourage you, step out of your comfort zone because everything you really want, it's outside your comfort zone. Come on, somebody, you hearing me? I owned a rental property. And uh, so they were cleaning this out. Oh, just dropped it. They were cleaning out this home, and they brought, they, they were sitting on the counter or something. I don't know what the deal is. I'm struggling here. I don't know. They brought this, and I was like, oh, my goodness, is that ever an old phone? And some of you young people, you're like, what is that? You know, it's a phone. I mean, all right? Believe it or not, one day, can you imagine one day someone brought this home and said, honey, look what I got. It's the latest model. I mean, look at this thing. You literally, you just put one end up to your ear and you talk. I'm getting us all confused. You talk in it like that and, and you just, and we can literally, with this, with this contraption, we can literally call someone down the street and talk to them in their house. I mean, we don't even have to, we don't even have to get out of our house. We can, we can call someone on the other side of town with this baby. I mean, look at this. Is that, how cool is that? I mean, we can, you just, you put it up to your ear and you just talk in it like that. I mean, and they literally hear you on the other side of town. One, at one time, this was like the greatest, most incredible device I mean, people were literally pumped. Now, I know that you just don't put that in your pocket, young people, and it's a little awkward, but this was like at one time, like that's how you communicated with people on the other side of town. Now, you didn't use this in your car. You could only use it in your home, and these wires were connected to other wires that were connected to telephone wires. That's where that sort of came from. I know some of this is like blowing your mind. But, I mean, and, and you, you would talk to people through this. Is there anybody in here, you actually had one of these phones? Oh, yeah. Come on now. Yeah, I mean, it was like, it wasn't, it was like when you got this, were you thinking, hey, we are in. Yes, come on now. And, and you, could have, you could have always kept some of you, now do you still have this phone? Okay, you got rid of it a long time ago, right? Because why? The methods changed. The mission to communicate is the same. But now, you know, we, we don't have this phone, but now, now we've got this unbelievable cool thing that has come out. Now I can literally talk on this while I'm driving down the road to people anywhere literally in the world. It's not connected, I mean, think of that. It's not connected to anything. I mean, literally on the way here, Carol and I did this Facebook video thing where we were like literally on a camera with the phone, it's got its own camera in it. Can you imagine? I mean, how awesome is that? And we were literally like doing a Facebook Live. She was holding the phone, so don't worry. She was holding the phone and I was driving, but the method has changed. And, and it's very different, but it's better. It's much better. And sometimes we can get so married to the method. Well, pastor, we've always done it that way. We've always had that program. We've always sang that way. The stage was always set up that way. In fact, you know, the, we, we didn't have these screens. We used books and things change. Things get different. And I believe that God is about to bring a harvest in this church and things will have to change. Things will be very different. It won't be like it was, but God's about to ignite this church to a whole nother level. Now, 
I'm sort of crazy like this, but I don't think for a moment that it was an accident that God was just sweeping through tornadoes and said, and, oh, shoot, I hit that church. I didn't mean to do that. I meant to guide that a little bit more to the left and hit Chick-fil-A. But man, what were we thinking? We should have been paying more attention. We actually hit the church. I mean, they're going to think I don't love them. They're going to think they're not blessed. They're going to think, why us? But see, you know what I believe? I believe God knew that Corona, the virus was coming. I believe that God knew that, you know, all the unrest was coming. And God was saying, I got to get them ready because there's a harvest that's getting ready to happen. There's something that's about to happen. And so we got to prepare. We got to get ready. Well, Pastor, I don't like the two service thing because I've got friends. And if I don't see them there, then I'm thinking, you know, why come? If, you know, why go if I, you know, if, if I can't see my friends there? And if you, get, if you really grow and have three services, then I'll never see all my friends that I love. I'm telling you, it's about to get uncomfortable because God is going to bring people in. And some of you that just sit there all the time, God's going to say, no, you go up and you pray for them. You go up and say, hey, can I get you in a life group? Hey, you got to come to my house. You got to be a part of our group. We're going to talk about things that neither one of us have anything in common. But you're going to start choosing people to go out to eat with and say, hey, you want to go out to eat with us this Sunday? We're going to go to, well, you won't go to Chick-fil-A, but you'll go somewhere else. And you say, hey, you want to go out to eat with us? And then you're going to get out there and you say, no, what do I talk about? What do I talk about? I don't even know what to talk about. Because I don't even know what the, oh, you want to talk about church? We don't know anything about church. And it gets uncomfortable. But see, God is going to use you to do things you've never done before. God is going to use this church and reach out in methods like you've never used before. Things are going to change. It's going to get uncomfortable. And you say, well, who stole my church? Who stole my church? It didn't used to be this way. It didn't used to look this way. Where's that favorite picture that we painted on the wall years ago? And, and you know, it just, it doesn't look that way. And we had some sacred cows that we thought would never, they would never move that. They would never change that. But, you know, it's changing because I believe God wants to bring hundreds, not five, not 15 people, not 20 people, but hundreds. What would your church look like with 200 new people by the end of this year? I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. Come on, church, I'm trying to help you. You say, well, we prayed about that forever. It's not going to be that way. I'm telling you, it will happen because Carol and I have experienced it over the last five and a half years. Uh, we've watched God bring in hundreds of people that we've never met, that we don't know, and their lives are changing. Ladies that were prostitutes, uh, ladies that were hooked on heroin, people that had broken marriages, people that were living together. And You say, oh, Mark, they don't look, they don't look like they should look. We were just hoping to God they would get married. You let the pastor, he'll take care of all that. But you just start loving people. So, when you live uncomfortable, you can expect the miraculous to show up. Because, see, it gets out of your hands. It gets out of your control. And you can't control it anymore. God's doing it. Man, there's been so many times I thought our church is so messy. Our church is so messed up. You know, Caroline, we have a little pride. You know, we like, you know, we just don't, we don't want you to come and see everything, how messy it is and how broken it is. And, 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 and we got a lot of messy people. And, and so you, you're just like, well, you don't want anybody to see it. You know, they, you, we only take pictures of the good stuff. You know, if you watch anything on social media, you just, I'm just telling you right up front, we only take the pictures of the good things we want everyone to see. But there's uncomfortable everywhere. And when you walk in the uncomfortable, growth begins to happen. Growth in people's lives. Growth in your life. How long have you been doing what you do without any change? How long have you been coming here and just taking up a seat and you comfortably know the songs and you know what to do and you know what the next move is. You know what the pattern is of the church because you're comfortable. 
So every move, every move has been tough. Like when we first went to the first building, we, we wanted to know how we were going to pay for it and how it was going to happen. And, you know, and God provided a miracle then. And we moved to the next building and God provided then. And all along the way, God was making a way. And so we found a building two weeks ago, two Sundays ago. I was driving. It took a Sunday afternoon after our online service and, uh, and began to drive around and say, God, you got to help us find a permanent facility. We're ready for a home. We need a home. And in fact, I was praying several Several weeks ago, I said, God, at this rate, I'm going to be 70 years old before we have a building. I'd like to enjoy this. I mean, after all, we've worked really hard and we've gone through a lot of uncomfortable, you know, I'd really like to walk into a place that's ours. And, and so um, I thought the rate we're saving, you know, we'll be 70 years old before we have a building. We've been debt free from day one and, and we kind of like that. And, and, uh, and so I, I took the Sunday afternoon, I started driving around, and I, uh, and I went to this, there's been this one building that we've driven by several times, and I told Carol, I said, man, that would make a great church. And so I, for about two hours, I drove by every shopping center, I drove by every uh, warehouse, I drove by anything that I thought could remotely be turned into a church. And presently we meet in a school. Presently we get up at six o'clock on Sunday morning and we have an army of people that load in a boatload of gear and, and equipment and sound and video and lights and, and instruments and children's ministry. I think you did it for a little bit. So some of you have a clue of what that's like. And we've done it for years. It's not fun. However, we sort of make it fun because Carol cooks breakfast and we, we work real hard. We'll get to eat breakfast, you know, before it's all done. But anyway... Um, I went and looked at this building, and, uh, and it was, it was $4.1 million was the asking price. And uh, so I thought, I'm just going to call them. I don't know why. It was really dumb. But I, I said, I'm going to just call them and see if, they'll, you know, if they'd ever sell that building. And I called her, and I walked up to the door and saw a little number, and I said, hey. Uh, I, it, she answered and said, hello, which sort of took me off guard because I thought it would be a little bit more pro professional than that. And, and I said, is this, like, are you tied to this? Uh, laser craze building. And uh, she said, yes, I'm the owner. And so I told her, I said, well, I'm a pastor here in, in Gahanna. And I said, you know, I'd driven by this building several times. I thought it'd make a great church. And I don't know if you ever consider selling it, but we would like to have it. If you ever, if you ever think about selling it, let us know. She said, well, you know it's listed, don't you? And I said, no, I did not know that. I said, but that kind of excites me. And I said, we're, you know, we only have $165,000. So, Lord, it's a little difficult, a little challenging to buy a building with that little money. And uh, so... Uh, I told her, I said, well, let me pray about it and, and think. So the next morning, she calls me and says, hey, would you be willing to let me give your information to the real estate agent? And I said, sure. I don't know why she did that since we only didn't have enough money, but she did. So we went through it, and uh, some of our future team that is worrying more about five years, 10 years down the road, uh, we, we went through the building, and I mean, we got pumped. I mean, like, we got really excited and I said, oh my goodness, this is amazing. 23,000 square feet. And, uh, and, and all the way, meanwhile, I'm getting very uncomfortable thinking about the whole thing and how we're going to do it. And so we talked to her. And, and uh, so I talked to our team. And, you know, we talked through our concerns and obviously financial concerns. And, and then uh, they, someone said, well, you could probably do it with 10% down. So I was figuring all that out. I thought, well, man, that'd take a lot of faith. You know, first of all, we didn't have 10%. Second of all, how would we ever make that payment? And, uh, and so, um, but I got my faith up. I thought, maybe we could raise this, you know, somehow. Maybe, I don't know how it would work. It was just goofy. And so uh, then I talked to our church accountant and, and, uh, and talked to a couple loan officers. They said, no, you're going to have to have at least 20% down. I thought, oh, that's at least, you know, six, 700,000. I'm like, oh, this is impossible. There's no way we can do this. And so... Um, I talked to a few other pastors. They encouraged me. I started to get excited again, thinking, okay, maybe we can do this, and maybe somehow we can raise this kind of money. And, uh, and of course, if you raise that kind of money, then the payment would be less, and it actually seemed like it'd make a little bit more sense, you know, uh, if we could buy it at the right price. And so um, we went and looked at We took many of the church people through last Sunday, and as we looked uh, around, everybody got excited. I mean, everybody was pumped. We could have our very own church building for the very first time. And uh, I mean, it's four years old. This, uh, it's smack in the middle of everything. And um, so we were pretty pumped. And so I came home that afternoon from seeing that, and someone, one of the young couples in our church texted me and said, hey, 
We want to give. We want to give towards this. Tell us where to give. You know, I said, well, hold off. We haven't even made an offer on the building. We don't even know if we can get it. And I said, don't spend that money, by the way. And uh, so then, uh, then uh, a pastor from Iowa, I made a post on Facebook, and a pastor from Iowa said, hey, we want to give to this. We believe in this. We believe it's God's will to, that you get this building. I said, well, man, hold off. I thank you for believing in us, but hold off until we figure out really. He said, no, God told me to give to you right now. So I'm going to send you a check. So give me the address. I said, well, in that case, here's the address. And by now I'm starting to think, maybe God has got something more in this than what I'm thinking. And so, I mean, it was just minutes after that, I thought, uh, I felt like God just spoke to me and, and just said, you know, first of all, I was trying to believe God for like two or 300,000. And then when they said 700,000, I was trying to believe God for 700,000. And then I felt like God just spoke to me and said, if I can do 700,000, you're already way in over your head. Why don't you just believe me for 3 million? And uh, so I thought, we've been debt-free from day one. Why don't we just stay debt-free? And I thought, that makes sense. And I thought, I can't do 700,000 anyway. So if I'm gonna believe you, I might as well just go into the deep end and just go crazy and get uncomfortable. So... I called one of the people on our future team. I said, okay, you're not gonna believe this, but I feel like God really gave this to me. And I said, uh, I said, I believe that God just spoke to me and said, we're gonna raise $3 million in 30 days. And let me just say, I talked to a few capital campaign people and they said, now you, you take three or four months and you know, take some time and build your vision and get some nice graphics and then take your annual income and divide that over three years and that's about what you can raise. And our annual income last year was about 550,000, something, okay, that still won't do it. In three years, that building will be gone or, you know, something, I don't know, but, you know, and I thought, that's not going to work. So I called my, uh, called one of these guys and I said, okay, here's the deal. I believe that God has spoken to me and said, we're going to raise $3 million in 30 days. And he's, and I'm just waiting for him to say, you know, now let's be reasonable. You know, that's a little audacious. You know, that's a little uncomfortable. And he said, man, I believe that too. Okay, now, so I'm starting to get really pumped. And he says he believes it. He said, I, he was one that went through the building. He said, man, when I walked through that building, I believe God wants us to have that building. He said, in fact, I came home and he began to cry. And he said, my, I talked to my wife and he said, we want to help you. And he said, we will give $200,000. Now, that may not seem like a lot of money to you, but that was a lot of money to me. And I thought, God, you are in this. It's uncomfortable when you step out on faith. It's uncomfortable. And maybe right now, God's maybe dealing with some of you and say, I've never given like that, but I could, and I could change the history of this church. I could change the whole trajectory of a new life and make everything different. And maybe God begins to speak to you. Okay, so I got off the phone. I was a little jittery, I'll be honest with you. I'm naturally hyper anyway, as you probably can sense. And, and these are times where I just close the door and it's just my dog, Hank, and I, and, and Carol, actually Carol closes the door and, and makes me stay in my office until I quit pinging off the walls for a little bit. And, and, and so I called someone else and I said, hey, I said, I believe that God says we can make th raise $3 million in 30 days. And he said, I believe it too. He said, in fact, my wife and I want to give $100,000 to this. Now listen, we got a bunch of new converts. I mean, our churches, are, our churches are filled with new people and God is speaking to them. They don't know that they need to just sit there and wait and be reserved and say, I don't know if it'll work. I don't know if, it'll, if I give this, if God will ever give it back to me. Why don't you just give something that just is really put you out of your comfort zone? Why not? Give enough to say, we're going to pay this, we're going to build this church, and we're going to make sure it's debt-free so we can give to missions and reach this city and do something that's absolutely awesome. Because if God could do it through us, God can do it through new life. In my message, I hope I don't split your church. I mean, I don't get to preach out very much. 
you know, so if, I'm, if I mess things up, you can just sort of correct all this. But let me tell you, I believe that God wants us not to be married to the old methods, the old ways that we give our just our 10% and maybe $2 in the offering. But God's saying, no, let's change it up. I'm coming soon. You're not going to need any of that money anyway. So why don't we just give it to the Lord and watch the kingdom of God begin to grow and do something extraordinary. So we started this June 3rd, or June 1st. We Obviously, some of our people gave before this. But as of today, I don't know who's been giving while I've been speaking. But as of today, in, in eight days, Infinite Church has raised $447,000, or 447721 dollars I believe we're going to do it. I believe God's going to help us. I don't know how. Do I get nervous? Oh, you bet I get nervous. I lay there in bed and go, oh my God, this better work or I'm gonna be just like crucified. But see, I know and I've learned over the last six years, if I will step out and just trust God, I'll let it be his. He knows, everybody knows I can't do it. It's gotta be a God thing. Why don't you just trust God? As we're coming out of this whole season, why don't you say, you know what? I'm not gonna do it the same. I don't wanna go back to normal. I don't wanna go back to the way it's always been. I wanna be different. I wanna be more on fire for God because you never know when you begin to give, maybe it doesn't come back in a financial blessing, but maybe it comes back in your lost child coming back to the Lord. Maybe it comes back in your marriage being healed. Maybe it comes back in your mind being relieved of anxiety and depression. Come on, church, can we stand? I believe that God wants to do something incredible. We can choose comfort or we can choose growth. They can't both coexist. You're going to have to go one way or the other, church. Why not just blow the devil's mind and say, it's all always been this way, but today we're going in a new direction. We're going to do something that's very different, and I believe that God wants to move through this church in a new, fresh way. I believe that you're going to choose growth. I can tell this church is a worshiping church. This church has great leadership. This church, your pastors are talked well about everywhere I've ever been, and their name has ever come up. You are primed. Yes, you're comfortable. You've got a good building. You've got good situation here, but do you want to stay that way, or do you want to say, come on, I'm stepping out of this. I'm stepping out of this. God, I'm going to go find somebody and bring them Sunday. I don't mean maybe, Pastor, we got to go to three services on Sunday, but I want to hear reports. I've got someone coming with me. I watch Carol, my wife, and I'm going to have her come right now and pray, but I've watched Carol teach a life group with people you, I would have never dreamed she would be sitting with and relating with, I'm not sure she relates, but I watch her on every, every Wednesday night in a small group with former prostitutes and heroin addicts. One young girl, she has been abused with satanic rituals as a child and it's really affected her life. Yes, try to have a conversation with someone like this that's so uncomfortable. I'm telling you, it's coming. Someone's gonna be sitting by you that you don't know. Someone's gonna be talking to you about things you don't understand. But God, man, I tell you, I thought some of these, I thought those people on Jerry Springer, I thought that was all just a joke. They're in my church. They're real. There really are real people like that. Because the devil is really good at what he does. He destroys. He destroys. And church, we've got to find a burden. We've got to find a hunger to change it. Because it will never happen if we remain just comfortable. I got to feel his spirit in this place. I believe there's a spirit that's going to sweep through this room right now and say, I'm plotting, I'm pushing, I'm trying to pull you out of your comfort zone. You've always done it. You've always had everything you've ever wanted. Now it's time to give the rest of your life to kingdom work, to give the rest of your finances with God as the priority, with God as the main focus. We're going to forget all the things in the past and we're going to put all of our energy, all of our prayers, all of our focus on what lies ahead. Carol, I want you to end with prayer. Father, we come.
come before you tonight, Lord. We come before you comfortable, the place that we should never be. There are so many people lost, Lord. There are so many people that have no idea who you are. And Lord, we must learn to look through your eyes. Lord, we must grab your lens and be able to look across our fields. Lord, looking across the circle of people that we are surrounded with. God, we must see through your eyes. Lord, I pray tonight that you will baptize us in courage, Lord. I pray that you will allow us to have such a strong core within us that we can truly share who you are with everyone we meet. You created a beautiful world, God, and we love living in it. It is good. We have to look beyond the bad and it is good, but it is also comfortable. I pray for Dayton, Ohio, Lord. I pray for the pastor, friend, and his sweet wife and their children. For the burden they carry for this city. A worshiping church, Lord, you said in your word, the worshipers, you hear them. We come before you tonight. Broken in our spirit, Lord, for a world that's hurting. Broken in our spirit for a city that's hurting. Broken in a church because the people have been hurting. And fill us, Lord, I pray that you will renew us in your spirit. Lord, I pray that you will give us, Lord, more courage than we've ever had before to truly walk down the streets, the vessel of you with your spirit overflowing, your sweet aroma mixing across to every person that we come in contact with. May the offerings that we give, Lord, of ourselves, and our worship be a sweet aroma to you, Lord, I pray, wherever we may go. Because now it is time to grow more than ever before. Now it is time to reach family members and the backslider, those that do not even know, those that have never felt your presence. Today is the time for us to break out of our comfortable place for us to lose the I cannot be used mentality to open up our arms and say Father would you use me Lord I pray that you will enlighten to us exactly what you can use and Lord allow us to be so liberally to give it to you everything Lord everything we want to settle less than everything for you I pray for the ministry staff of this church. I pray for the student pastor and his family of this church, Lord, that reach into the homes of students that are broken, the graduates whose dreams have been bashed away. I pray for the kids' pastor. I pray for the kids' ministry. I pray for every usher. I pray for the person that holds the flag in the parking lot. Lord, I pray that your spirit will be so full to overflowing to every one of them that people are drawn like a magnet. They cannot drive down this road without pulling in to new life, Lord. And I pray that we're ready for them. I pray that we can push beyond our hurts, beyond the molestations, Lord, that have held us locked up in place, behind the addictions that have literally locked us from being able to believe that we can be more free us tonight, Lord. Free us tonight from all the hurt, all the pain. Help us to believe in your forgiveness. Help us to believe, truly believe in the remission of your sins and that your name is applied to our life. When we go down in your name, when we're filled with your spirit, allow us to truly believe that we are yours. We are the extension of your hands and your feet. We must carry you into this lost and broken world. 
Make us brave, Lord. Make us brave. Forgive us for all the lost opportunities. Forgive us for all the times that we were frozen by fear. Help us to live free in you and share the hope of eternity to every person we meet that no service will be lost, that no opportunity will be ignored as we grow in you. We thank you, Lord, for yet another day. We thank you, Lord, for yet another chance to introduce our world to you. In your precious name, amen. such an anointing in this room and I just feel like we just need to kneel down. I know we don't do that as much anymore, but but just at your seat. There's plenty of room in between the, the aisles, but if we could just kneel down and just ask God to talk to our hearts. We've been called out of our comfort zones. God burden us, Jesus. People have been praying in this building every night this week. God's preparing us for this. God's getting us ready for something. God, speak to our hearts. What do you want me to do? What do you desire for me to do? As I've been praying that kind of prayer, God just burdened my spirit for years. Every Thursday morning, I went to an addiction house and I spent Thursday mornings with those guys. Every Sunday morning, we vanned them here. And so many of those guys got baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost. And some even keep making the drive here to Dayton. And that door closed. And I had every intention of finding a place in Dayton, doing something on our own, whatever we've got to do. I've waited too long. I've procrastinated too long. I've used coronavirus as excuse. I've used our building program as excuse. We're going to find a way to do it. What's God burdening you to do? What's God burdening you to give? We need a miracle to do what God's called us to do. It's beyond us. What would God speak to your heart right now? Who would God want you to witness to? What would God have for you to do? Oh, Jesus. God, call us out of our comfort zone. God, we have no desire to go to heaven as a comfortable church. God, use us for your glory. God, stir us. God, change us. What do you want me to do, God? What do you want me to give? Who do you want me to talk to? What burden are you placing on my spirit? Jesus, lead us. Jesus, lead us. Jesus, talk to us. forgiveness flow in this atmosphere God heal wounds in this atmosphere Lord we don't have time for that we've got to do a work for your kingdom we've got to do a work for you it must be about my father's business you're not doing it for me you're doing it for Jesus God I've got to do a work for you God, burden us right now. God, talk to us. Speak to our hearts.
say one last thing. Sometimes we feel like if we don't have a large amount to give, that, you know, it's not going to make a big difference in the grand scheme of this building project that you're in. And I've been just telling our church, get your kids involved. That $5, that $10, whatever it may be, it makes a difference because if you'll do your best, I believe that God is going to take it and multiply it. He's a master of it. He did it with the five loaves, the two fish. If you'll take what your best and put it in the hands of God, Carol and I, there's so many miracles that's been happening over the last several days. And, you know, Sunday after the live stream, Carol and I went out to eat, grab lunch. And a couple called. They've never been to our church. They've never, they've never been in one of our worship experiences. And they, they text me and said, can we meet you? And I said, sure, we just got to a restaurant. You want to eat lunch with us? Again, we're so used to uncomfortable anymore. We just, we just go for it, you know. And they said, they said, yes. And so they drove to the restaurant. We talked and, and, you know, got to be with them. And at the end of it, they said, we've been watching your church. And we, we see that you have the potential to get a building. And we want to be a part of it. And they slid two white envelopes across the table and said, we want to help. And we wish we could do more, but we want to help. Of course, naturally, I'm thinking, is this $1 bills? Is this $20 bills? I'm thinking, what is this, you know? We get in the car, and it was $10,000 cash. Someone who's never been to our church. I'm telling you, if you will step out on faith, if you'll do something that's uncomfortable, I believe God's going to take all the people's money around business owners, people that are watching this church, and he's going to do the rest. But it starts with us. It starts with us. Amen. One more time. Why don't we just stand together and raise a hand. Just thank God for, for stirring us tonight. We pray that he's changed us. God, we love you. We glorify you. We honor you. Thank you for, for pushing us out of our comfort zone, Lord. Thank you for your touch. Thank you for speaking into our hearts and into our spirits. We love you, Lord. We bless you. We glorify you. We honor you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, I always get excited when other people are blessed. There was a time I had a little bit of envy and, and, and somebody's got a cooler car than I've got and Somebody's got a, a better. Now I'm to the point where, well, if God can bless them, He can bless us. And I so rejoice with Pastor and Sister Condon and the awesome things that are happening in Gehanna because what God can do for them, He can do for us and He can do for new life. We need a miracle, but God still performs miracles. He's not run out of miracles, He's not run low on miracles. And I know our. Our careful plan you talk about the financial plan we're going through all that and, and corona kind of kind of put a stop to that but you know on our envelopes it says 2020 vision vision offering and our online giving is 2020 vision you can give at any time we've already raised tens of thousands of dollars I don't even know exactly what the number I feel bad you know to the penny you've been doing it for eight days we've been doing it for a few months I have no idea what we have but I'll find out and I'll let you know but you know God lays on your heart Man, let's, let's give it. And not just money. Let's go after souls. And again, not just that. Let's put some of these things off to the side. Let's get back to prayer. We don't have time for disagreements. We don't have time for, we gotta let God heal us and God pull us together. There's times that there's so much unity in this place and, and we gotta have that. We gotta have that as a church if we're gonna be who God wants us to be. Thank you for being here. God bless you. Be careful with social distancing. As I say often, if you are very, very careful about that, you should leave quickly because it gets a little, a little crazy after a little bit. But, but be careful about social distancing. But let's socialize. Let's have some fellowship. Thank you for being here. God bless. Can we give 